Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, welcome to the TRG podcast. My name is TRG, the Relationship Guru, and uh, this is episode one. It's super exciting. Uh, today we're going to be tackling uh, trials and tribulations of finding a new job. So that's going to be the topic of today's podcast. Uh, so, you know, get ready for that. That's going to be super exciting. Welcome to the TRG Podcast, everyone. This is the podcast where we discuss all matters of relationships that people are suffering from. So uh, on today's podcast, uh, we have our first ever guest. I'm super excited to introduce him. Uh, it is our, essentially our account manager, our COO of, the, of TRG. <laughs> uh, please welcome uh, Patrick Nieve. Hopefully Thank I pronounced you. that correctly. Patrick. It's Nieves, by the way, Nieves. but don't worry about I'm it. Sorry. I know that it's super hard to pronounce. Uh, but yeah, uh, my name is Patrick Nieves. I am pretty much in charge of uh, running the entire operation for TRG. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. So thank you. Thank you for the invitation, man. Oh, it's my pleasure. And thank you, obviously, for making the time. I know that you do an incredible amount of work for TRG. So we're eternally grateful. And uh, thank you for all the viewers, obviously, showing up for our first ever podcast. I, I know I'm really excited. I'm sure you're really excited to do uh, to do this today. That's for sure, you know, especially because we're going to be talking about the super important topic that is uh, finding a new job, right? Mm -hmm. So um, honestly, I'm all ears. So uh, when you're ready, man. Okay, let's get this kicked off. Um, so uh, for viewers that don't know at home, uh, Patrick is uh, currently in the midst of uh, finding a new job. And um, that's always a very difficult proposition. Uh, it's really relative to everyone's situation, you know, including am I finding a new job while I have a job? Am I finding a new job while I don't have a job? What is my kind of circumstances and everything like that surrounding that? Um, and I'm hoping that uh, users can probably find some advice that Patrick can give them at home uh, of his trials and tribulations during this kind of entire process. I know he has a bunch of stories that he could probably tell about, you know, what's been transpired in the last month and a half, two months. And hopefully users can get something out of that that would pay dividends to their particular lives. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I think that I want to start off with one story, which sure. is the genesis of it all, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's always important to understand where we're coming from and what actually put us on, on the place that we're at uh, at this point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in this in the sake of transparency, um, I'm a very, very transparent person. I love to be honest and not to be open because um, I find that I find that later down the line when you have well met people uh, in your journey you never know when you're gonna find somebody and when you're gonna need their help mm -hmm. so if you were transparent in the past it actually works uh, better for me so first story how, how did it come into this right why 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 am i looking for a job uh, maybe people are thinking like well isn't he supposed to be working at trg yes definitely i'm working at trg i'm building the uh all the brand identity setting up deals i'm setting up uh, well the entire channel and um building campaigns for trg but at the same time you know i find myself in the need of actual actually uh dedicating myself into something else as well not because mm -hmm. trg is not a challenge but because i actually feel like my talents are also needed somewhere else right mm -hmm. so what brought me here is uh well personal story real quick i actually had a lot of things going on in my personal life that actually uh put a lot of burden in my shoulders mm -hmm. and limited me uh, from actually even continuing further in the sense of being able to work properly you know i was mm -hmm. underachieving i was being un unreliable and I think that's something that I'm still working on, by the way, wh mm -hmm. which we're going to talk about later. But that's what brought me here, like not being able to consistently achieve what I was achieving before. Mm -hmm. And and that was because of th these personal issues. So uh, we can talk, we can go into detail as well. I don't mind, but uh, I guess I'll leave that to you, to, to, to your decision, Jeffrey. 
Okay. Uh, thanks, obviously, first and foremost, for sharing some of that, uh, Patrick. I obviously know that that's not always easy to admit um, some of that information. Um, I think that whatever you feel comfortable with sharing, Patrick, is what you feel comfortable with sharing. Uh, I think we can certainly produce an episode with without all, all that <laughs> as well. Um, so it, it, that's really up to you. Uh, I, I think what I... I think you brought up some some interesting things there. So unreliable uh, and underachieving uh, and underperforming. I, I wanted to ask, you know, let's rewind maybe a couple months ago when these things happened or six months ago when these things happened and you were kind of going through it. Did you yourself feel like you were underachieving and underperforming or was it something that like you just didn't have any self-realization about at that time? Well you know i think you just hit the nail in the head with that mm -hmm. one and it feels hard you know uh because i was fully aware of what, what, what was going on at that point it's super super hard to be aware of of this realization that you're going down this hill without anything that's stopping you right mm -hmm. really you're trying to I mean, grab onto something and maybe you pull yourself a little bit back up, but then you're still going downhill uh, mm. once you once you turn your head around, your head around. So, uh, yes, I was fully aware, and that's probably what took the highest toll on on my personal well being, yeah. because I knew that I was probably on on a, on a path to losing my job. You know. Mm. And uh, this realization actually came when I began to, 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 to get feedback internally at the company that, that I was working mm -hmm. for. And I actually got the, the first unreliable of my life, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this came actually from the, uh, my, I mean, my direct manager, I was the director of mm -hmm. management for that company. So my direct manager was the, the COO mm -hmm. and I was aiming for that position, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like like I had everything. I know that I had everything for that position. But you know, when I got that this um, this message, and I quote, uh, "The team thinks that you are unreliable," unquote. Uh, well, pretty much that destroyed my perspective of what I was trying to achieve uh, mm -hmm. at the company, and and it it destroyed it in the sense that I knew that I was messing up, of mm -hmm. course. But at the same time, I didn't know what to do to, to stop it. So mm -hmm. that's that's the first realization in there, yeah. Amazing. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Not amazing that you felt that way, but amazing <laughs> that you, uh, you know, trusted us with this information and you were uh, very kind of forward with it. Um, I think there's a couple of things definitely to unpack there that's uh, pretty interesting. So uh, for users that don't know, I, I'll leave the company unnamed because I think that that's probably the best thing to do and any names associated with the company. Uh, I just kind of insider knowledge. I worked with Patrick during that time and I was in a lot of those meetings. So I have a unique perspective really uh, on this current situation. Um, and I, I witnessed some of that kind of behavior and that kind of stuff that Patrick's speaking about. And I, see, I saw it transpire really over uh, a period of time. Um, so I, I guess I can maybe offer a unique perspective to some of the users that might be listening out there on, on what was going on. I think that the the other thing that users might, uh, or listeners, uh, I shouldn't say users, listeners might know uh, or might not know at home about Patrick is that Patrick prides himself on being a very responsible and respectful person. He's the type of person that uh, when he tells you that he's going to give you 110% and he's going to be there at this time, he's going to be there at this time. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick, but I, I feel like you probably felt very deeply conflicted because all of that was just not you really right like that at your core anyways your core values that all of that that transpired really wasn't your characteristics and what you were brought up to to kind of be right and what you prided yourself on is that correct yeah that is totally correct and you know it's like this feeling of knowing that you're losing yourself but there's not, nothing that you can do about it and 
even though you try because uh again uh, as you just said I'm, i'm a person that is really responsible and i know my stuff you know i know who i am i know where i come from i know everything that i have put forward into getting where i am at and then seeing yourself i mean flushing everything down the drain pretty much and not being able to stop that current that flow is awful man it destroys you internally and both both internally and with your interpersonal uh, relationships whether at work or with your family even and in, also with your friends it's super super hard to get out out of that uh, mm -hmm. position which i would love to talk about by the way and i'm telling you how i did it but as you know it's it's a dark position to be in and mm -hmm. i guess that, that's the point that i'm trying to make Yeah, you know, you tap into a couple things that are uh, very interesting and, and actually common, to be honest with you, with a lot of people out there, at least in my opinion, really common. Um, I think a lot of people feel the darkness sometimes. They feel the inescapable, if you will, uh, like almost like you're being sucked into a vortex and no matter how much you're trying to, you know, swim out of your situation, exactly. climb out of your situation, everything, it's like, one step forward two steps back one step forward three steps back like constantly just dragging you down 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 and that endless vortex feeling is is just very draining right uh it's it's very tiresome when you're trying to pep yourself up all the time to get up and go to work and get up and fight and get up and apply for jobs Uh, when you just have, you know, three pieces of bad news happen to you at once, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, they actually pile up together. It's not like with shit sandwiches that you get something bad, something good, something bad on mm -hmm. top of it. No, it was just bad after wrong after, mm -hmm. after bad after wrong. And it really does take a toll on you. And it's like getting hammered down with every single bad thing that is happening. Uh, all the i mean until the point where you're pretty much on the ground and you're just defeated mm -hmm. and you're still getting this uh i mean mm -hmm. these pounds on, on your ego and on, mm -hmm. on your principles you know and you know that you have to do something and you try to do something but you just don't get it to work mm -hmm. right it's it's like what what's going on what what why is everything not working so But this is something that I've been doing for a lot of time, a long time. You know, I usually I'm really self-aware of everything that is happening mm -hmm. in my environment and within myself as well, mm -hmm. with my relationships. And I usually try to overthink things. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, that's all that that can be a like double-edged sword, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, because for I mean, on one side you understand probably what led you to that point. Mm -hmm. But if you overthink things, you might uh, misunderstand, overestimate, or maybe even think about things that are not there, right? Mm -hmm. um, it actually happened to me, for example, that I was thinking that um, uh, that I was going to be uh, let go from the company mm -hmm. when all of this was going on. And you know, it, it, it didn't actually happen when Uh, I thought it was going to happen. It actually happened a couple of months afterwards. So even though I was on the brink of losing my job, I was still uh, being considered uh, a good asset by the mm -hmm. company, you know, and they tried to give me, they tried to give me options. They tried to be super, super helpful and, lend, and accommodating. Lend the yeah, yeah, accommodating. That's the word, right? Thank you. So I guess, you know, the the hardest realization in here is that after everything this, that that happened that i was mentioning knowing that i'd let the company down mm -hmm. was probably the hardest hit on my personal stability right i, I can see why uh you know it, it, <laughs> um Not speaking anything about the company and everything like that, but uh, you know, if if they went out of their way to try to accommodate your situation and everything like that, it probably exacerbated how you felt about the situation even worse, right? Um, yeah. I'm sure if that if they were complete assholes about everything, and and you know, that's that's probably a conversation for another time. Um, oh. It would probably be a lot easier to just walk away and you know, just be like, well, 
you know, part of my life. Yeah, thank you for it, your time. Right? Like, you yeah, buy, right? yeah, it's like I'm just gonna, you know, go somewhere else <laughs> or whatever. Um, but you know, you cared, right? And 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 I'm sure you still care. And and um, I think that was a, a very interesting, you know, thing that you brought up. I think the other fascinating thing that you brought up, and sort of rewind this a little bit, but okay. you know, I know a lot of listeners won't have the pleasure of maybe ever meeting Patrick, or maybe they will. Um, but if you just met Patrick in a vacuum and you were to tell me, oh, this person, and not to rub salt in the wound or anything like that, Patrick, but, you know, this person is like unreliable or this person is late for meetings or this person, you know, doesn't show up or whatever, you would like, it would be the farthest thing to describe Patrick as that completely, right? And I guess my point really is like, this kind of stuff can happen to anyone in life. It's life, right? It, it really is, right? It's just things that life throws at you from time to time, fair or unfair, uh, that sometimes really suck. Um, and so, you know, you guys at home, you're not alone, not alone at all. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and you know, I usually try to reach out to people that I thought were going to have something relatable to share with me. Mm -hmm. But honestly, uh, that's also a, another hit that reality gave me uh, mm -hmm. at that point. It, it was clear to me that nobody had gone through exactly the same path that I had been going right. through and reached the same point. And I came to another realization. I actually found out that I brought this up on myself, you know, mm. it's not the, the company's mistake. It's not my personal issues mistake. It's not... Even my mistake, it's a combination of everything that mm -hmm. I did and decided, which brought me here, you know? And I guess I'm really respectful of everything that happened, whether good or, or bad, because, you know, I have, I have learned that when you keep this positive side of, uh, of you on things, of things, you really tend to start fleshing out uh, the good things out of the bad. And then you, whether good or bad, you take whatever you can get from them. And that actually allows you to, to grow internally and professionally and personally, you know? So by reaching to these people, I actually got a lot of views, you know, mm. most often views that were not what I was trying to, to get from, from them, what I was trying to hear, right? I was probably looking for some sort of viewpoint where people were like, yeah, ditch them. You don't need them, right? You can, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you can get another job all the time, but you know, at the same time, by not getting this, I probably like harmed myself in, in the sense of, uh, that, that I was trying to find an answer where I should not be looking for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, instead of looking at myself inside, I was looking for, for that answer outside with right. people that were not even related to my to my problem, right? Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Um, just to recap, um, for users that don't know, by views, uh, Patrick is referring to perspectives, uh, not actual views, but uh, <laughs> yeah, like views on YouTube. Although we're obviously hoping for that to be the case. I'm um, I'm gonna keep some of the profanities uh, to uh, <laughs> minimal <laughs> in case of demonetization or, you know, the. YouTube algorithms uh, not recommending us to wider audiences. But um, yeah, I think you bring up some very interesting topics there, Patrick. The feeling of kind of like dread and the feeling of like responsibility, uh, the feeling of uh, introspective, like looking within yourself and self-reflection. And, you know, you've been, I'm sure for most of your life, you've always been a person that has a wealth of knowledge and a lot of answers to things. And this is probably one of the problems that you didn't necessarily have the answer for. It was enigma, right? That alone probably really like you're struggling to deal with that. It's like a, you know, a, a immovable force me or sorry, what, what's the term? Uh, yeah, you, you know, I feel like I was trying to crack something open. Right. Uh, by, by just hitting at it uh, and going at it as hard as I could. And instead of cracking it open, I actually cracked myself open, right. which is what broke me. I guess that that would be a good analogy to, to put yeah. it. 
yeah exactly you're trying to crack the code but it's like there was probably not a code to be cracked right it's a, like an immovable object beats an unstoppable force right like it's just clanging against two things that are really never going to change direction almost uh and you know i think that probably some of your you know kind of mental fatigue set in and and uh caused you a lot of harm you know because of it yeah for sure yeah. And, you know, I, I guess uh, in the sense of moving forward, well, it happened, right? It was yeah. inevitable because of uh, all of these things that piled up. And I was on the street, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, on the street, on a figurative sense of work. Right. Thankfully, I have a roof, uh, a roof offer over my head. Yeah. Uh, and the company, um, they were really fair with me, I guess, despite everything that happened and uh, despite being... Uh, unreliable at that point I was still let go on under good terms you know mm -hmm. I feel like the relationship ended within acceptable terms you know uh, on a really good standing despite everything that happened mm -hmm. and I feel that I still left a good impact despite whatever happened at the end so mm -hmm. I want to I want to think about that I have not yet confirmed this but I believe that uh, the quality of the work that I put uh, uh, I mean, that I created and everything that I produced at, at the company, it did actually uh, make an impact and it, and will still carry over uh, over the years, you know? Yeah, no, I can attest to that 100%. It's, uh, there's, there's definitely a net positive there. And uh, I think that, um, uh, I think, you know, just me personally speaking, I, I think it was a mistake, honestly, uh, to, to part ways with you. Uh, I think that you would be a valuable asset anywhere that you would go uh, at any company and, um, you know, whoever your next employer is, is going to be super lucky to have you. Thank so, you. Thank you, man. Yeah. I truly appreciate that. You know, uh, I've been looking for jobs. I, I guess that's, that's where I wanted to, to get to, you yeah. know, I'm super excited to talk about this because I've, I've been discovering a lot of things that I thought I didn't have. Mm -hmm. Uh, let, let, let me be honest with you, like three, four years ago, I would usually just go into, let's say, Indeed.com or Glassdoor.com. I would just pick a random um, position that I saw was attractive to me. Mm -hmm. and I would apply to it, uh, but I would usually uh, apply to these positions that were uh, within my physical mm -hmm. location, you know. And um, I was not really trying to exert myself or to push myself into out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So I, I would do a killer job, you know. I would kill it the whole time, and I would I pride myself of the for the quality of my work and all the knowledge that I bring into the equation mm -hmm. of any company that I join. But uh, you know, ever since I started working remotely three years ago, that's when things started to. to to change right mm -hmm. like or uh, in the good sense of the word i think that there was transformation for me uh because i became way more reliable mm -hmm. way more responsible more consistent you know mm -hmm. i was I, I am sharp you know mm -hmm. I, I think that that's what i'm trying to to, to to get to uh and when you work remotely uh having an asset that is not reliable is not a good practice no, and yeah. you know this I know this. I, I mean, I, I've had the pleasure of actually hiring people, of building my own teams, my own departments. And, and you know it immediately, right? When, when you see somebody who starts being unreliable, you mm -hmm. usually try to pull the trigger earlier uh, than later, right? Mm -hmm. Because why would you, you, you put yourself on this situation where you are just probably wasting resources, valuable resources that are limited, uh, especially in the, in the startup world, you know how hard it is to, to get funding and, and things like that. So uh, just to tie this all down. Now that I was making all these discoveries and well, trying to battle my internal demons at the same time that were telling me, don't apply for this position because you are unreliable, right? You cannot get this job because you are unreliable. Mm -hmm. it, you know, this was my main demon and that was the one that I had to, to defeat First, mm -hmm. to be to even be able to apply for, for positions, Jeffrey, you know, right. super important to always 
be open to this realization that mm -hmm. there's always going to be something stopping you because it's like a coping mechanism um, from what I understand, you know, even if it's a work relationship, you still have to go through the coping stages, right? Mm -hmm. Because you, you left it. Even if, if you, if you left on a good standing, if it was your decision, if you got another job uh, offer, that's fine. You know, if, if I had gotten another job offer lined up, I would still have had to cope uh, and go through the coping stages. I'm not sure if I'm saying this, this 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 right. Is that the right word for what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I think I think the listeners would understand okay. uh, what you're to, what you're referring to. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, you know, you go through these coping stages, um, and there's some sort of uh, I mean, you know, like like feeling of the feet always. Mm -hmm. I mean, following you, you're always dragging this. And every time you look back, it's not just the defeat. It's it's this feeling, uh, as I told you, uh, at least for my case, that whenever I, I turned back, I was seeing this. Well, it's not the physical form or anything, but I was hearing this. You're unreliable, right? Mm -hmm. And I, But I had to keep dragging that. And I kept dragging that and dragging that until, well, I pretty much closed my my own doors you know mm -hmm. and and that's it's hard to to to, to carry something so heavy mm -hmm. for such a long time you know i was i carried this for more than two and a half months after mm -hmm. i left the company and it put me on a really really dark place to be yeah. honest so yeah interesting what do you think about that like i really want to get your your point of view on oh. this I, because you know i'm talking a, a little bit about really subjective things and uh, i'm using i'm usually a, a, re, a really visual person you know yeah and i have a huge imagination for things so i guess the things that i was explaining are my way to make a sense of everything that i was feeling at that point yeah it's uh it's interesting that you uh i, I think there's uh, definitely there's a couple things there um so the feeling of it it's interesting that you mention uh, reliability and unreliability quite a few times in that conversation, because it's like the man who always prided himself to be reliable, all of a sudden is seeing himself as a 180 completely as yeah. unreliable because some because people have told him that, like you were mentioning, this is the first time that someone's ever told yeah. you that you were reliable, unreliable to your face, or maybe written you up and said you were unreliable. And uh, for you that was probably like the boogeyman you know like yeah. that was like the arch you know nemesis for you right so hearing yeah. that is something that you just could not shake at least for for a long time and i'm sure that you going through what you were going through at the time and currently still going through didn't make the situation any better it probably just exacerbated things uh even worse It, it did and it actually you know to add to the, to your point i actually started feeling i don't know if you've heard about this uh, concept it's uh, the imposter syndrome mm -hmm. you know so i was starting for for those that don't know what, what it what this means it's pretty much perceived fraudulence yeah. so you feel that despite everything that you know everything that you've worked for everything that you've you've learned everything that you have gained in terms of experience, despite all of that, mm -hmm. all these companies that you have been at, all these projects that you have brought into fruition, it does not matter, you know? It makes you feel like, and I'm sorry for the word, it makes you feel, feel like crap. It yeah. makes you feel like somebody that really is not worth a penny, seriously. Mm -hmm. And it puts you in this vulnerable position where anything that happens, you just assume that it is because of what what you just went through you know right uh, this is a really good example i actually had a couple of really really good uh interviews lined up mm -hmm. i was actually applying for uh up and coming companies that are uh, really disrupting the market i love uh new technologies and, and, mm -hmm. and all, all things like that you know i was actually um I, I had two two really strong strong final interviews lined up and i just i just felt you know i went into the interviews it just didn't happen right like like there was no connection between the interviewers and myself you know mm -hmm. 
But that was not because they were not the right company for me. I'm sure that they were the right company. I'm yeah. sure that I would have done a killer job if I was given the opportunity. But you know, I, that's that's the point. I was waiting for somebody to save me. You know, right? I was waiting for them to give me the opportunity when I what what I know that I should have been doing is creating those opportunities right. and showing them like, hey, I'm I'm the right guy instead of. Am I the right guy for you guys? Like, you know, that's the difference. And it really defeats you. It, it's it's this thing that you carry over again, as I was saying. And even when you go to sleep, well, you cannot go to sleep, to be honest. I I, I remember back when I just off-boarded from the company that I was working at. Uh, there were periods where, where I didn't sleep for more than three days straight. Oh, wow. And... You know, uh, obviously, when with the sleep deprivation, there come other things. Um, yeah. You do not secrete uh, the right kind of neurotransmitters. Chemicals, yeah. And chemicals. You you are decompensated. You start yeah. losing weight. You can see me probably right now, and, and I'm a skinny dude. I've always been a skinny, but mm -hmm. you know, if you saw me back in the day, which actually you you saw me by the way. Yeah. Uh, but for the viewers, as well, I was ultra skinny. I I probably lost yeah. around 10 pounds. Uh, or more from when I was left go to uh, two, two months ago, probably. Yeah. I think it's very interesting because, um, yeah, and I can attest to that. Uh, it, it almost, it, it almost felt like you're like malnourished, right? Like you're, yeah. when you're going through that insomnia, like you were not eating, uh, you know, obviously not having the proper sleep, the which proper is sleep. super vital for really anything, the proper rest, no matter what situation you're in, right? Like you're, I mean, it's biological. Your body needs to recharge like a battery, like any battery, like your cell phone battery or your car battery or whatever. Um, and if you don't do that on a regular basis, then you're going to be running on fumes and you can only really do that for so long before, you know, something breaks down, no matter how strong you are. And it's really not about being strong it's just about you know biology <laughs> at the end of the day right i can understand you know i can relate to why yeah i'm sure i haven't done the scientific research on this but i'm sure there's a lot of studies between having depression uh feeling really mellow and blue and everything like that and the you know direct correlation between that and how much actual like REM sleep that you actually get, you know, per night and how many hours do you actually get, right? Uh, but yeah. sorry, please go on. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, you're actually tapping into something that is truly important for me to tell you. Uh, if you start thinking that you have depression, chances are that you are not depressed. You're just in need for attention or in need for some loss or in need for some sleep, as it was in my case, you know. I actually felt that Further than being depressed, I was a failure. Mm. So being someone that has had depression in the past and I actually was medicated, I just drink uh, citalopram. That's a, mm -hmm. uh, that's the name of the, of the medicine. Uh, and I actually left that, you know, because I knew that it was controlling my life. And this was mm -hmm. back, I mean, seven, seven, eight years ago. So I drank, I drank that for a year and a half. And I was just tired of having to do that every day mm -hmm. because... I had to drink that to, to feel good. So coming back to, to now, to when the, all of these things happened, I was like, hell no, I'm not depressed. I know how that feels because I knew there's this feeling when, when you just open your eyes and you're just lying there and you are not able to move. But not because you, you have like a, a sleep paralysis or anything. No, you're not able to move because there's no real stimulus going on inside mm -hmm. your brain that is actually allowing you to to move mm -hmm. you know and it would happen constantly man uh if i was not uh losing sleep which is what happened most of the time like uh, three days straight as i as i said until i actually passed out from from sleep deprivation you know mm -hmm. uh i would wake up and i think this is something really personal that i i have never told anybody i would pretty much just pass out and reach my bed you know mm -hmm. not this bed but it, it was on a, mm -hmm. uh, another place uh, reach the bed and just pretty much disconnect like immediately fall asleep you know i was so tired mm -hmm. uh, and so defeated at that point that that's pretty much it you know i would i would just 
uh, fall uh, asleep immediately and I would wake up anywhere between 16 to 24 hours later, you know? Wow. Then you wake up and as I was saying, you cannot move because you realize, yeah. holy f I'm sorry for my French. Uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> you know, like, holy fuck, I just went three days straight without sleeping. Right. Without eating properly. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, it's like like the hangover. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, I was not drinking uh, or doing any, any, any sort of stupid like a lot of people do. But, you know, I was neglecting myself regardless. Right. Yeah. Because you go to like the recount of everything that, that happened. And, you, and, and I was like, oh, my God, I just stayed one time during those three days, you know. Yeah. It was it was probably a good meal yeah whatever you can say like a really really packed meal but it was only one time in three days right and you, you, you go like oh my god i didn't shower and during yeah. those three days i didn't do this i didn't do that i missed this i missed that and and then you go like wasn't i supposed to be scheduling interviews or joining these other interviews and then then i would go and recount my my steps I would feel even more defeated, you know, because I was like, oh my God, why is this happening to me, right? Like, right. Why am I tying myself all uh, to these personal issues that I had? I was going through them one uh, over and over and over and over and over again. And then uh, I had the personal stuff, obviously, the, the, that I was going through. Um, and obviously I had the work stuff going on as well. That was this voice in my head. Well, not, not a voice, this realization, you know, this reminder, constant reminder that was like, you're unreliable. Wherever I was trying to, to open myself a path, you're unreliable, you cannot go here, you know? Mm -hmm. and that felt like shit, man. Like, seriously, you, you, you don't know, it's not even dread. It's, it's a sense of darkness, like this yeah. sense of solitude and abandonment you know it's super super creepy to be there because you are alone and you are genuinely and totally alone even if there's people looking for you even if you have someone which i thank you i thankfully had um i had people that were uh always trying to reach out to me like hey mm -hmm. patrick how are you doing hey patrick hey patrick even if i know i was not replying and you know who they are you know you, yeah i mean you you were part of that and if it was not for that you know i would probably have lost myself at some point yeah I think. and, and I... i'm super sorry go ahead no yeah. no please Finish your sentence. Sorry, yeah. just to finish, yeah. Finish your thought, yeah. And I and I guess I'm super, super thankful for that because uh I really came to this to, to this point in my life when, when mm -hmm. I was uh you know, I was even going outside and I would go to the grocery store. I still had a little bit of money, you know. And and I tried to keep as much as I could because mm -hmm. I knew that it I it, it would not last forever but you know i would even go to the grocery store and i would put my 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 b negative energy code I, I call it like that mm -hmm. and and people you know when, when you're afraid of someone like you you look at them and you, you're saying like oh no shit, i'm gonna walk around on the other side on the other side of the road right or or the street i'm gonna cross to the other side of the street because he looks he looks creepy right mm -hmm. well that's pretty much what people did i was so negative i was so dark i guess mm -hmm. that people were actually going away i was pulling people right. away from me and and you know i'm thankful because even though i was trying to do that to shun people off my out of my life, I guess right. that's the word. For example, you you were still there, right? So I, I guess that's what saved me. Thank you for sharing that, Patrick. Uh, that's obviously super deep, uh, and I know that's difficult to to relive and and live through and and everything like that. Um, so I really do appreciate it. I'm I'm sure the listeners appreciate it as well. And what's what's uh, I think pretty shocking about all this is that even though you felt alone you're not not just in your personal life but like listeners back home like there's tons of people around the world that feel like this every single day right i mean that's that's the sad reality of things right i've witnessed this behavior myself not only in you but 
myself, maybe not to the same extent, but definitely there were days where I would go seven days basically laying in my bed doing nothing but like watching my you know laptop like watching netflix or something like that and eating in my bed like you know maybe showering like once a day and then like going back to my bed and like you know not seeing the sun for like a week you know or going outside to get yeah. fresh air right you could clearly know that there's something wrong during that mm -hmm. period right if you're actually like having that kind of behavior um i i think that there's some very interesting things to unpack there. So um, I think that uh, feeling obviously a sense of dread and, and uh, being alone, you almost feel like you're the only one in the world that's experiencing that particular feeling or experience, right? Like no one else in the world can empathize or sympathize with you 100%. And that's a very scary thing because we as people, we're kind of tribal by nature, right? Like we hang out in packs and groups. And when you push everyone away, you feel so isolated and alone. And that's kind of when a lot of really dark thoughts start to creep up on you. Yeah. And you know, uh, just to piggyback, piggyback off that idea, mm -hmm. if I could give you an example of how this feels like, I'm not sure if you have seen this movie called Get Out. Yes. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. well, uh, do you remember there's this scene where, well, the protagonist goes out to have a smoke mm -hmm. and then he, he goes back in because he gets uh, scared and he finds the hypnotist, like the, mm -hmm. his girlfriend's mother in there and he gets hypnotized. Mm -hmm. And uh, she puts him under this hypnotism and she puts him under this place called the Sulkin place. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... Mm -hmm this place where he just sees one square one screen and he's just falling down without being able to mm -hmm. but you can still hear you can still everything you can see everything and you can hear everything and right. as they they mention it you know it's like you are the you are like a secondary participant you know mm -hmm. you, you're just looking and ever at, at everything and listening and everything but you cannot act upon it and that's how it felt. Interesting. It's almost like being in an endless pit, but you have all your senses still available, right? You feel you all the pain. You yeah, feel you feel all the, the pain. You can see in front of you. Yeah, you can feel all the darkness and the being alone and isolated and, and everything like that. Um, but there's kind of nothing in front of you, ahead of you, above you. Like you don't know your way kind of out, yeah. you know, into yeah. the light, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Because it's, it's an empty space, man. You cannot mm -hmm. grab onto anything. There's nothing to grab from. Mm -hmm. So you cannot pull yourself back up. And again, you need somebody to pull you back. I, I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that if you shun yourself away from people there really will be a point in your life when you reach this uh, this new realization of uh, i probably need to stop doing this you know yeah because it's a decision you know nobody shuns you away from their from their life just because there's no reason there's always a reason you know right and i consider myself uh, as I was mentioning to you, like a person of energy. And, and, and I felt like through the energy that I gave people, because I never told them like, hey, you should stop talking to me. Or, hey, I need time to, to, to think about my stuff. No, I never said anything. I just outright to stop re replying, you know, mm -hmm. and with this energy, with, the, with, with this view that you transmit, you pretty much are telling them like, hey, fuck off, right? Right. And, and honestly, it feels like that because I've, I've done it and, and, it, and people have done it to me as well. Yeah. And it feels awful because it, it feels even worse because you know you're hurting them. Yeah. And uh, you're hurting the closest people like yeah. that you love, right? Like the closest people to you that you know actually give a shit about you that no matter if you didn't have a penny to your name, they're still kind of there for you. And, yeah. And that's like the last people that you want to hurt. But I think that, I, well, th this is just me like speaking kind of like hypothetically, um, but from my own experience, I guess, extrapolating my own experience. But I think that sometimes we get into a point where we're almost 
uh, we feel like failures, we're embarrassed almost, and we just don't want to drag people down with us, if yeah. that makes sense, right? Yeah. Like, we know we're in such a spot right now of loneliness and dreadfulness. It's kind of like, no, 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 you don't want to be here. Like, you, I, I don't want you, like, I care about you too much to ask you to come down here and pick me up because I know that it's going to be an uphill climb. Like, we're going to have to climb up, you know, Mount Kilimanjaro or Everest to get out of this hole, right? Like, yeah. it's going to be a long journey. And I don't want you to see me like this, right? Like, um, maybe, I don't know if that's how you felt, but uh, that's certainly how I felt, you know, at times in my life. That is definitely a good example of how I felt as well. And, and you know, uh, I usually reached the, the point where I would not even give a shit about what they felt. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to be honest with you about this. I feel like crap for having felt that. Mm -hmm. I, I feel 100% bad about it. About it. Mm -hmm. and although, uh, I mean, again, I knew what I was doing. I knew where I was going to, to fall into. I still didn't do anything about, right. about it. I just decided that I was going to fall hard and flat on my face again, because this was not the first time. And then you come into another realization, patterns. Yeah. Right. What are you repeating in your life? What, what, what is it that you're doing consistently? It can be something wrong uh, or it can be something good. Or, mm -hmm. or I mean, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, but if you're consistent with anything, eventually you will get the consequences of it, right? So if you are usually overspending money on, I don't know, going out to, to eat at fancy restaurants, chances are you're probably not going to have enough money by the end of the month, mm -hmm. every month, right? Consistently. So these are the patterns that I'm talking about. Uh, on my personal perspective, you know, there were a lot of patterns. The first one that I can tell you is that I would always try to cover myself or to protect myself behind my work, you know, mm -hmm. because my work usually is something that doesn't falter that is always so shiny so uh good looking and people respect me when when i do things at work yeah that i would put myself in there because i was my core my comfort zone right but if you looked at my personal life things were not good right and i'm not happy to, stay, to tell you this you know i actually i'm still working on getting things back on track right but i am at least thankful that i realized that i was doing it you know that i was falling into these patterns that i hate actually i absolutely despise being like this person that is not in uh, equilibrium with everything you know mm -hmm. and that's it that's the main point in here the reason why i found out that i needed to stop doing what i whatever i was doing in the sense of self uh harming myself so badly with without sleeping without uh eating proper without um well uh cleaning myself daily i mean showering mm -hmm. it's because i honestly was always thinking about all the lives that i was hurting mm -hmm. despite uh me feeling that it was their decision to be heard or not mm -hmm. yeah which is true right you, you can decide for yourself if something is going to affect you or not mm -hmm. up to a point mm -hmm. but still the damage is there you know yeah whenever somebody affects you yeah you decide how much it affects you but right. the, the damage the intention the energy that's there and that's exactly what i was giving off and this bad energy these these bad behaviors from my end uh like shunning people away of my life again i know that i'm going in circles here but you know uh, I, I guess the problem that, the point that i'm trying to make is that uh after realizing that just giving myself one chance to reach out to the people that i that i love mm -hmm. that i care for mm -hmm everything changed yeah i think you probably came to a self-realization that these people are 
okay for you to feel the way that you feel, that people are going to accept you no matter what, uh, even if you're down to your last penny and you have nothing and you're pushing everyone away. Um, and you're probably better off for, you know, ex accepting people back into your life than pushing people away, right? Exactly. Um, and I think those things are, you're, you're right, you know, like it, there's a there's a choice there on how you conduct your actions. And there's also, you know, a choice on how you kind of interpret some of those things and how you feel about some of those things. But there's also a lot of ramifications that you leave in your wake, right? On the, on the actions that you take and the collateral damage that happens during that entire process, right? Like if I'm telling all these people to go away and I'm not being reliable to them and all these kind of things, you know, you're going to damage those relationships, you know, over, over time. Right. So there are, are definitely consequences to, to those actions. Right. Um, I think that you bring up some, uh, very, um, I think interesting points that your safe haven was really work for a long time because that was like something that you excelled at, you know, you were at the top of the year game with, uh, you were really praised for, it was one of the maybe one of the only positive points in your life at certain points in your life right and that was really your um what you kind of your event horizon right like you would just go towards that your plateau all the time and it, it's interesting that obviously when you know the the company parted ways with you that pillar kind of came crashing down right because it was so much of the emphasis and your attribution of time and everything like that was put towards that that when that was torn down and taken away from you i had nothing you're, yeah you're kind of like a person in a maze that's like where do i go do i go left right do i go up yeah. down do i go forward like i don't know what to do now right yeah. um and uh, I think for listeners, I think that's a really important lesson for everyone to learn that it's okay to be passionate about something and fall, you know, fall into that. But I think it's also really important to have balance with a lot of things because I'm willing to bet, Patrick, that a lot of your relationships and, and other things have possibly suffered in your life because of too much emphasis or too much over reliance on how much gratification work brings to your life right it's escapism right like you yeah. you're almost using it like some people use like video games as an escapism i i'm guilty of that for sure when i if i'm stressed or something like that i might just play you know a couple matches of dota or something like that or whatever but right. uh the reality is if i play the whole day of dota my problems are still gonna 100 percent exist Sure. they're not going to go away right like they're yeah. there <laughs> they might yeah, even probably. be worse like exactly. over time yeah, yeah they, they might even be worse because same. i didn't tend to them like i played eight hours of dota straight or whatever and i missed the deadline for this and then it's even you know worse right worse you know on my side of the spectrum you know it was really <laughs> because uh i mean i was not awake you know <laughs> when 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 these things were happening like all these missed deadlines all these missed uh, appointments and everything i was asleep and there was no human force that could wake me up because obviously i was so sleep deprived and everything mm -hmm. and, and it was really destroying my life from mm -hmm. within you know so uh <laughs> you know I, I find it funny that you say this about well Dedicating yourself into something that is probably not being fruitful at the moment, like well, playing video games. I, I think that everything is is fruitful if you do it with 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 responsibility. You yes, know? and moderation. In yeah. moderation, right? So, yeah, there was a point in my in my life, maybe when I was around 19, uh, 20 years, around that, that that time, give or take, that I was playing almost 16 hours a day uh, right. of uh, League of Legends, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was really good, but I was never actually that good. I was right. not like the top 1%. I just reached diamond and that's pretty much it. That was my limit. You know, I never actually tried to exert myself or to push myself into reaching um, further boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know what? And here's the point. 
I, I was not getting any satisfaction out of playing anymore. Mm -hmm. Every time that I was playing and I won a match, instead of feeling gratification or any feeling of success, I would actually be so hard on myself. And right. would, I mean, you, you know that you have your in, internal voice and, and my internal voice was telling me, yeah, you won this match, but how much did you earn from it? Right. right? So this is the tie down to, to why I actually felt protected at work. The reason is because at work I was making money, you know, mm -hmm. and through money, I felt that I was being valuable or that I was right. something, which is a really stupid way of, of seeing things in my right. life. And now, now that I realize it, you know, this is new. This is new to me, by the way. I, yeah, I, I, I this is through uh, this process of self-realization and being honest with myself, open with myself, transparent, and knowing that even if I had remained at the company okay yeah mm -hmm. right uh i would probably never have felt valuable you know right because i was putting every single point of my attention my energy my love whatever you you can think of yeah into work right and i was not putting any any of it into my personal life right which is where it was needed to, right? Exactly. Like when, when things were kind of blowing up and, you know, yeah. like not going well. Yeah. It, it, it's it's a stupid to do it, but you know, when you are in in that position, you're, you're like, yeah, at work, I, I feel good. I don't want to go home or if you were remotely, I don't want to disconnect because when I disconnect and I go downstairs or I go to the other room, I'm going to find my family and they're going to give me a lot of shit, right? Mm -hmm. And I, you, you, you try to avoid those things, but the problem is by not doing so, you're actually harming yourself by fault, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the vicious cycle that I was falling into and that I fell into, by the way, which actually led me to, uh, obviously, well, what we discussed until now. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting, uh, Patrick. I, I think that there's, um, uh, obviously <laughs> you've been through some things that are, a lot more profound than a lot of people might ever go through. Yeah, uh, you know that's that's like hundred percent. I can I can attest to that. I um, I want to go back to you were mentioning about uh, the story about how you were at the grocery store, and oh. uh, you kind of were like you know people were kind of staying away from you because yeah. you had a demeanor to you and everything like that. And you know I know that feeling all too well because whenever you meet someone that's going through a very dark period or depressed or anything like that, it's, I can't really explain it, but it's almost like they have a physical aura around them that it's like repelling everyone. And unless you've witnessed it yourself or experienced it, I'm not sure if you like listeners would hundred percent know yeah. what I'm talking about, but I, I know for a fact that, um, you know, probably about, let's say almost 12 years now, 12 years ago, my father went through this. And at that current time, I was working a, a night audit job. I was a night audit manager. So I would work from 11 a.m. to 7.30, which right. graveyards are rough. <laughs> <laughs> I would not recommend that. But uh, you can imagine, you know, when I got home, I was tired because, you know, you're working the night shift. And I remember distinctly, I would pull up my car into the driveway. I would not want to go into my home. This is my home. But you could almost feel like there's a dark cloud, like pretend this is a house. There's a dark cloud enveloping the home, right? Like, so, like, like in Harry Potter, you know, when they put the, up this, these barriers, right? Yes, exactly. Kind of like that, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's just insane because it, it's so... I, I guess the part of the reason why I'm mentioning it is because I'm trying to describe to listeners at home what it might feel like but also that the power that it holds over people. I was literally in my driveway for probably about 30 minutes. Keep in mind, I just worked a full shift. It was probably grueling and exhausting. The only thing that I wanted to do was go in, change out of my suit, grab something to eat and go to bed because I had to do it all over again, you know, in whatever, 18 hours or 16 hours. But 
having someone depressed in the home that was not showering, not shaving, not yeah. eating, you know, whatever, smelling like that aura. Yeah. Projected throughout the entire home, you know? And I don't know if you felt that way yourself, but I can only imagine that um, that's probably what other people felt around you. Yes. When they saw you. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it, this is great because I actually played around a little bit with it, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, even though, yeah, uh, yes, I was at that dark position, I still took my chances to explore it and to try to take, uh, hone it to my advantage. Even though, <laughs> well, uh, we're going to talk about that in, in a second, mm -hmm. like what I did in order to actually shove that away and actually get back to my former self or to my new self. That's what I like to call it. Mm -hmm. you know, I think I'm way better off now. So the point here is that I actually found out that even if you shower, that aura doesn't go away. Even if you if you shave, if you clean yourself up, if you give yourself some love, you look at, uh, at yourself in the mirror and you say, "Hey, Patrick, you you look beautiful. You you are trying to get better, right?" Mm -hmm. If you know, you, you see how I stuttered in there. Yeah, I was not able to tell myself like you look like you looked before. Right. You know? That's this feeling, this, again, this realization that you're not good enough, you know? And then you, you shove yourself out of the world again and whatever positivity you got from it, you're still going to keep it hidden. So again, you put this, uh, this self-defense mechanism, I think it's called a facade, right? Mm -hmm. And you go out, even if you're showered, you smell good, you, you brush your teeth and everything, you, you uh, clip your nails, whatever you did, man, people are still going to be looking at you because you're pulling, you know, that, uh, well, darkness is it's what actually is pulling the most light, you know, mm -hmm. and it's retaining this light, obviously, and you pull the, the light out of people and that's the way I see it, you know. And that's mm -hmm. why they actually go away from you because they don't mm -hmm. want to be pulled towards something that is so dark. So uh, it's it's like a way of trying to explain it. Obviously, I'm sure that if we look at it uh, from a scientific point of view or we try to explain it with physics. It's I, not going to I mean, of course, uh, like I'm sure that maybe there's some psychological, medical or scientific reasons mm -hmm. behind those things. But I think we're just, I mean, I think it's good to explain, like, it's very difficult for us to conceptualize this, right? Exactly. Um, because it's, Unless, and this is the reason why when I was mentioning, you know, the story about my dad, it's difficult to know that feeling of dread and st sitting in your driveway for 30 minutes, basically not wanting to go into the house, unless you've been around someone that is like that or you yourself, you yourself. Are, are like that, right? You wouldn't know that feeling, right? Like and, until that that's happened. Um, so no, I, I, I totally get you. I, um, I, I think it's actually quite fascinating that you mentioned, um, even though you cleaned yourself up, maybe you felt good for about five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. Tops, man. It tops. Right. Um, but like, it just goes to show you that if internally, you know, in your heart and your head in your spirit and everything like that, like right. those things aren't aligned and those things aren't right. I you're just not it doesn't matter what externally is going on outside right you could be the most handsome yeah. beautiful person in the world and you know in the outside world you could be you know have all the fancy cars yeah. and clothes and everything like that but if you're not feeling the right way inside you're going to ultimately feel like the way that you felt right like yeah. that sense of dread and and not only that, but people are going to be able to sense that around you too, right? That are just kind of within your vicinity. So yeah, and, and, and you know, I, I remember that I told you, well, I'm a skinny dude. People that are usually well, where I live, I live in Mexico, but by, by the way, Mexico City. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not a fun place to be at in the night. You know, there are yeah. people that actually go out to do the deed, right? Like. 
to steal people's uh, uh, things, right? So mm -hmm. I would actually go out in night and people would feel present by me, you know? <laughs> And I would, and you know, and internally I was like, hey, don't, don't, like me trying to speak to their mind, like, hey, don't, don't feel like that. I don't want you to feel like that, right? Yeah. I'm not a threat. I just want you to feel com comfortable and secure. I'm walking down the road and not in the sidewalk, just so you can go on the sidewalk. And people were still feeling like, uh, like, uh, you, you can tell, like, people start walking faster and, and turning around and, and, And I was like, dude, I'm not going to do anything to you. And my, mm -hmm. like inside my, my head. And I was like, obviously, like, <laughs> what the f***, right? Like, mm -hmm. what, what's going on? What's this energy? This is not me. And I don't want to be, uh, I mean, to continue being like this. Because obviously, that's when the, 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 the everything started to, like, crack open. In the sense that I was, that this is probably why I'm not actually landing a new job, you know? This is mm -hmm. probably why my my acquaintances, my friends, the people that I love are not even looking after my after me anymore. They are mm -hmm. not, not reaching out anymore. They, pre they probably just gave up because they are facing this energy, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh you know, it's it's um you know, rewinding back to a previous conversation that we had obviously on this podcast, uh regarding obviously, you know, you you know, being offboarded by the company and, and how it's kind of like shot, really shot your confidence and, you know, your, your feeling of your own self-worth or your yeah. valuation, I, sh I should say, of your self-worth and how that's trickled down into some of your other final interviews that you've had maybe, you know, recently or whatever, right? Uh, you didn't feel like you performed uh, the best of your ability. It, it's just, it's so fascinating and I guess scary at the same time how um I don't want to say fragile because I don't think that you're fragile and I don't think that you're weak I think how powerful the human mind is yeah on on certain how influential I guess the human mind is on certain things based on just some experiences because If you looked at things objectively, and obviously you're going through a lot, and I know what you're going through and everything like that, but if you looked at things objectively, it's like one employer told me I was unreliable. Yeah. And they gave me a couple chances to rectify my situation. I obviously, you know, for yeah, whatever yeah. reason, didn't really step up to the plate, right? Uh, to meet my kind of expectations or the expectations that were expected out of me. And therefore, there was a dismissal. But if you look at it from a macro standpoint, they're one company out of yeah. two billion companies in the in the world, right? Like that was their perspective of me. Yeah. You know, it wasn't everyone else's perspective of me. But yet you carry, you know what I mean? Like you carry yeah, that viewpoint yeah. with you from interview to interview to interview to interview. And I'm sure that the final interviewer sensed that energy from you does that make sense that is totally true man and you know i was like tapping myself in the head like like i was like dude i'm i probably scared them off you know mm -hmm. i scared people off and, and not because i was creepy or anything as i was mm -hmm. mentioning you know I, i would shower myself even well after the three days of not sleep well i would usually have uh, shower myself and go I mean, when I woke up, I would go back to sleep again. I would eat something and try to, to reset, you know? Mm -hmm. And it would work. It would work for a couple of days. But it would always go back to the point where something triggered whatever was in my, in my mind that was not letting me move forward, which was my, my personal uh, problems uh, at that point. And, you know... Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I don't have the problems anymore, but I say at that point, because I'm over that. Uh, I mean, I'm, I am over letting those problems take control of mm -hmm. what my reality is at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I guess to make the point clear, uh, I don't think that you can reach anywhere in your life 
if you carry over the negative the, the negative things that you go go through so you, you always have to i mean grab your learnings and your takeaways and just move forward you know mm-hmm. but you really really have to mean it like okay i know i fucked it up i know i messed it up and i messed it up for good this time this was probably the biggest opportunity of my life man mm-hmm. like, seriously um i mean regardless of the details and whatever it was still a really good position mm-hmm. you know uh having a director rank um uh, i mean level of uh, of, uh I, i mean sort of position i guess well if you do it consistently and for a, a long period of time chances are that many more companies will start reaching out to you mm-hmm. which is exactly what happened to me when when i was uh well working for uh, other companies right mm-hmm. like back in 2019 i would i was the customer support team lead at another startup and people were reaching out to me and they were like hey we have this awesome position please come w- work with us mm-hmm. and i was like guys what the fuck i just <laughs> took, like, two two months three months ago i, I was in dire need of a, of a job right mm-hmm. and just now you you come and reach out to me right and now you reply or even people that had, that, that that had not replied to me they were now reaching out to me like hey man I, i saw that you already have a job but i have this great opportunity and whatever blah 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 and i was like dude i'm sorry right but you didn't believe in me when i was down why yeah. why why should i believe in you when i am on a power position right mm-hmm. so there's a lot of things going on in here and a lot of things to unpack of course but just to keep the conversation in on online with mm-hmm. this you know i think the, the, the important part to, to to know is that um if i if i had not accepted that i fucked it up mm-hmm. and that i was being a, a negative driving force for my own self mm-hmm. i would have probably never even gotten a chance uh, to to get out of the hole that i put myself into mm-hmm. you no know? um Yes, I mentioned uh, that, that 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 I'm super thankful for 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 everyone that that was reaching out to me, and even like this, uh, well, sort of like uh, energy that they, they were sending to, out to me, even if I would not read their messages, you know, you feel I'm, I'm a man of energy, man, mm-hmm. and and whatever happens, I know that it happens for a reason, and usually. W- w- what happens to me and what i have seen is that you attract whatever you are projecting you know yes so it's the law of attraction uh i mean if you're always thinking about let's say and your commute to work you're thinking oh my fucking god I'm, i'm i just got out out of the of the of the house and i'm probably gonna find this huge line of one and a half hours uh like always right And I'm going to have to sit through it until I get to the to the office. You're already predisposing yourself to for that to happen, and you know what? Mm-hmm. Chances are it's going to happen. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when I started to do things differently back uh, in the day, like a couple of years ago, maybe around 2019 as well, when I started working remotely as well, I I found that by being aware of what i was feeling and going through internally i was able to mold sort of mold and mm-hmm. and and reshape my outcomes mm-hmm. even if it was coincidence or causality i don't know and i don't really care man but i know that something changes when when we're positive mm-hmm. and i would love to talk about that uh, if you if, if you want to you know but Uh, yeah, let's I mean, uh, I think it's um you know, I, I think I've probably mentioned this to you the other day and I've mentioned this to other people before. Um uh, I know it's not so black and white, but if you take a any situation that you're in that you have a problem and you're kind of down and out, there's really two ways for you to kind of look at that situation, right? Either you kind of lay down and die or you try to fight back and climb yourself out of that hole right and you know i guess 
if you have that problem and you're negative, you're just forever going to be staying like this, right? Or even worse than this, yeah. maybe even below. Yeah. But at least if you're positive, then hopefully you'll find a way to go from this level to this level, then to from this level to this level and slowly build off of that. Um, it really adds nothing but a net positive, I think, when you are exactly. positive about a situation. Even if you're in a very dire situation, you'd be surprised on how much you can get through just by having a more positive mindset than a negative mindset. Yeah. Exactly. And, and you know, I, I was actually just uh, experiencing that first scan today. Uh, well, honestly, I, I have been experiencing that first hand since the past probably one and a half months, mm -hmm. you know, when I decided to put a stop to everything that was going on because I felt empowered. I mean, that I had the power to stop it. Now that I understood everything that was going both internally and externally in my life, mm -hmm. I said, F it, you know, I'm never, never again going to let myself be driven to these situations, you know? Mm -hmm. So I put a stop and it's, it's not like, okay, it's something physical that you say, okay, you stop. No, it's just something in your head that becomes tangible enough that you can feel like you're grabbing it and you just do it, right? You get yourself the courage and you do it. And <laughs> it was a transformation, man. Mm -hmm. Again, even, you know, even back then I was starting to, to eat better, to sleep better maybe not so consistently as, as as much or as much as uh, today but when i started doing i mean after i did that when i started uh, eating eating proper sleeping proper everything started to change man right like with this energy with this positivity i started getting in invitations for for interviews mm -hmm. which i had not been getting I mean, I remember that I told you that I would get people reaching out to me and looking for me and even asking for consultations uh, from time to time. And now this was happening again. And I was like, yes, I'm back on, on, the, on, the, on the road. I'm back on the, on the road that I know that is going to lead me to success. But, you know, I said, fuck it. I'm not going to follow my own steps again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually switch routes and I'm going to do it my own way, the real mm -hmm. way that I want to do it this time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I felt great that people were, re were reaching out to me. And I'm going to be honest with you. It was a feeling of self-reassurance that I much needed because, you know, I, I was feeling this uh, imposter syndrome as well. So, yeah. It was a boost of confidence, a boost to my ego as well, but I didn't let that control my my decisions, you know? So mm -hmm. so I said, no, I'm in control now. I am in control 100%. So I'm going to take the lead and I'm going to think about what I want to be uh, doing and where I want to be at in the next couple of months, you know? Mm -hmm. So long story short, you know, I, I was actually done doing some consulting work Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I, I, I got some geeks out of it, but nothing uh, long term, you know, mm -hmm. obviously I knew that I had to get a job. I knew that I had to net land that position. And <laughs> but still, you know, I'm so, so hard on myself sometimes that, that I, that I was like, yeah, I'm going to give myself the chance, but I want to get a really good position. You know, mm -hmm. I want to find the, 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 the job and the team where I can call myself at home, where I feel that I can actually do everything that I know how to do so well, plus continue learning, you know? And obviously it's it's all about collaboration. I love when people share their thoughts, their thoughts all around and you get so much out of it and you start growing both internally and professionally. Uh, I'm probably putting myself uh a really tough challenge you know mm -hmm. especially because i'm in this position where i'm not really well accounted for myself you know in terms of finances mm -hmm. but i'm willing to give myself this this chance as well even if it, if i have to eat just text for for now uh, i don't care man uh, i know that i have myself back 
like I know I'm I'm in control. I know that I that I that I want to get to a point that I'm reaching and I, and it's visible for me. It's something achievable, which is something that drastically changed back from when when I was telling you about these places that I was feeling feeling at. You know, it's actually uh, very fascinating because. I don't know if this happened to you. This certainly happened to me in points of my life and other people that I've witnessed that have gone through some kind of depression or really dark places and stuff like that. Once you have that kind of like acceptance, like, hey, you know what? I am kind of the main culprit in my story as to why I've dug this hole for myself. And you come to the self-realization that's like, no enough is enough right like i need to change my reality and my future and i am fully capable and aware that i need to do that and i'm responsible like and i can do it right it's almost like you have a superpower like you're just yeah turbocharged instantly right like the flash yeah. like you just your mind I, I can't really explain it to people but your mindset just completely shifts 180 you go from negative emotions negative outcomes negative everything negative energy all to positive i can see myself in the next three to five days i can see my future in the next three to five months i'm planning things ahead like that energy is infectious to be completely frank with you uh -huh. and just to share with some listeners um because i i've known patrick for a little while now um him and i started probably conversing maybe a little over two weeks now again right after he's kind of pulled himself out of that uh -huh. and immediately i knew that there was a completely different energy about him like i can sense it oh, you, you know? felt it too oh 100 like wow two thousand percent like it, it wow. was it was night and day like i can i can tell wow. you it was not like if i if i really pitted you guys together i would say like it's a completely different patrick like it's a completely wow. different person yeah nice. from the person that i was talking to maybe two and a half months ago oh, you, you see and i didn't mean i i mean being honest with you i don't feel like i changed anything right uh, it's just that this was real, the realization and this was, it, it was this feeling of saying okay stop it now and i mm -hmm. stop it and i'm in control now and mm -hmm. boom seriously it's that magic uh, that magical you know so uh, you know I, I think a lot of people will have a struggle understanding this because obviously there's people that are uh, more based on facts and yep. then probable fiction or well any sort of religious or ma magical thinking but this is not magical man no it's not <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. energy it's it's something that it's out there something that you project and that people can feel and that's why we were giving i mean i was trying to give you so many examples like going out to the groceries and people yeah. were staying away from you because you're giving up this energy and mm -hmm. obviously i mean if we look at it objectively yeah i was probably I mean, probably even my body body language was telling something different, you know? Mm -hmm. I probably didn't have any confidence or I was probably so scared that I was making people scared as well. Mm -hmm. Who knows? You know, I, I uh, thankfully, well, I feel thankfully, I mean, very few people saw me uh, in the position that I was because I honestly do not want to hurt anybody and, and mm -hmm. that was never my intention you know and but, but still i know that i did which is something that i'm i'm trying to to cover for and to recouping so uh you, you know uh i guess the struggle is in trying to understand these things that are usually not explained out there or i mean you cannot google them and just find out oh okay you you project this energy and whatever right <laughs> yeah. it's not not that easy right no it's not uh, but I guess uh, if I could recommend anything, I would recommend uh, the viewers' uh, book called uh, The Power. It's from yep. Rhonda Byrne. Okay. And I think that would be a great start point for people to try to understand what is it that's inside you that is actually showing in your everyday life, you know? Even, you know, have you ever had these uh, moments when you go down the, down the road 
And you know, there's these stoplights, obviously. They are always green, you know? You go straight and you never have to stop. Mm -hmm. They are always green. And you reach your destination, well, probably 10, 20 minutes earlier, just because you never had to stop. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. It's a coincidence, probably, you know? But chances are that your energy allowed you to be in that position where everything <laughs> was open, you know? Yeah. And, and I guess that's a good example to, to, to put it like in, on the table. Like, that's mm -hmm. exactly how I feel right now. Like, everything is green. Right. Everything is it's open. just go, go, go. Go, yeah. go, go. Exactly. And, you know, I'm so, I was feeling like chained to mm -hmm. my position. And now that I don't have those chains anymore, I'm just running, man but i'm running with care and um, responsibly and with moderation because i know that if you run too fast you might fall down flat on your face and you're gonna mm -hmm. hurt yourself too i'm taking my chances yes and i'm taking risks as well especially talking about getting uh, the, the new position because you know i have a couple of final interviews thankfully lined up i actually had one already mm -hmm. it went pretty well uh, and you know just today uh, well, that was yesterday um, for one of the companies. Today, one uh, company called uh, Zubia. It's a new company. It's a startup. Pretty much the CEO just told me, and this is not bullshit, man. He told me, Patrick, I found you because I, I looked at Sandesk Plus CRM in Mexico, and you were the only person that, that appeared. In the <laughs> and I was like, you're, you're kidding me. And he was like, no, no, no I'm not, not kidding you. Just go ahead and look for that. Well, he exaggerated a little bit. There were three, three, three results, but it's still, you know, out of but all like millions you're of talking people, about millions of yeah, yeah people. I, yeah. We, I mean, we were the only three people in there, and he said, "But I saw your profile, and you were the right person for, for what I need." And he told right. me, "Patrick, I need you. I need you to come work with me. I need you to, I mean, to build my department." He wants me to build an implementation department which I think is super cool and everything. I mean, he has a really good work ethic, but you know, it's like now I'm seeing the other side of the coin and I'm like, okay, I'm getting what I wanted, but I have to be really careful, you know, because if I pull the trigger too early, I don't want to put myself in jeopardy as well because yes. I could be getting a position where I'm better set for my future, you know, both personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. But also, well, it could be that I, I can get a position where I am paid more, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm taking risks, yes, but all well within acceptable uh, limits, I guess. Right. So hopefully it will work out. Uh, the only thing that I can tell you is that now everything is open, right? But I don't feel like internally, like anything changed. It's just that I was in there, you know? Now I'm just back here back to my former self back but i'm now reaching a point where i'm becoming this new self and i'm able to well share all of this with you <laughs> that's uh that's great um i congratulations by the way uh, i wish you the best of luck on on all those interviews and i hope you Thank get you. the job role that you want i i think it's uh <laughs> for for any listeners at home that are looking for uh you know operations person implementations uh process person uh you can kind of see how qualified Patrick is when the CEO of a company is doing a search for, you know, certain skills or skill sets. And there's really only three hits uh, yeah, right. <laughs> that, yeah, that kind of tells you that kind of tells you something right there and then, because that's very rare for that to happen. So yeah, uh, I, I actually felt like, oh my God, am I famous already? <laughs> <laughs> nah, so I, I, you know, I really want to highlight that. I think the other thing that uh, is kind of important with this discussion is that your situation didn't change all that much, right? Like you, you know, still have financial concerns and constraints, yeah. you know, yeah. your other things that are going on in the background of your life, but your mindset completely changed. So yeah. it's, I, I want to point that out to listeners to understand that like, it's not like Santa Claus just dropped a million dollars into Patrick's lap or something like that, or, you know, some super rich like person, you know, took Patrick in and was like, oh, here's a place to stay for yeah. free, rent free. You know, here's like 
a Lamborghini, you know, here's that, here's that. <laughs> like he got a windfall of like cash and, you know, everything was, you know, he won the lotto or something like that. And everything, all the wrongs were like rewritten. It's not that at all, right? It's it's yeah. the power of his kind of mindset and how he approached the situation. And I think it's, that's really important for listeners to, to know. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, I truly appreciate what you were saying. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, uh, that's okay. uh, seriously, man, um, I know that there's still a long road ahead of myself. Um, and I also want to make this point clear. I don't feel like I'm even like 5% uh, like in this in this journey already. Like <laughs> if I could even tell you like honestly how I see it, when I get the position that I want to get, and I got and I have the the offered letter. That's when I will consider that like the first one percent, you know, mm -hmm. the initial one percent, because the entire uh, road is ahead of myself afterwards. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it will depend on everything that I do and all the decisions that I make moving forward, how well it works. But I'm super super self aware and self conscious about everything that i've gone through how it feels to be in a mm -hmm. like, quite literally and well in the well psychological sense of the word mm -hmm. and i don't want to go back there man no absolutely yeah i was actually gonna sorry to interject but i was gonna mention okay. that um once you've been there and this is the, the same thing with myself and my sister and, and you and probably other people that i know once you've been there and you've managed to crawl yourself out most of the time you'll never go there again because you know you never want like you want to be the furthest away from that whatsoever yeah. you'll do everything in your power to forever kind of like never go to that place again that darkness again so i think that's really really fascinating that uh, you had mentioned that the other thing that i wanted to mention that i thought was uh very intriguing um that should probably be mentioned to a lot of listeners is that you mentioned the word control a lot you want to control right. your own destiny you want to do things the right way how you want to do them and i think that's really important and uh, honestly this is probably a topic for another podcast or maybe even the next podcast but uh it's really fascinating to have that empowerment to take that control under, of your own destiny really examine your self-worth um, and understand the different job offers that are kind of in front of you and how to evaluate them, whether that's a right fit for you, not just monetarily, but also yeah. just kind of like short-term, long-term kind of growth projections of not only yourself, but the company, you know, there's, there's a lot of things to kind of unpack there. But I think that my main point is like, taking control of your life and what you do with that, I think is super crucial. That's for sure. And you know, uh, unfortunately we live in a capitalism society. Well, everything is centered around money, right? And we yes. need it. So yeah. it, can, it can actually put you in these really bad positions as well. It can put you in really bad uh places just because you need money you know i was actually trying to to sell my car and i was almost uh defrauded because of right. that and and you know uh you think back on those things and you think on, on on all these learnings and i don't see them as mistakes i feel that yeah if i had caused that that would probably be my mistake but it's a learning and you know it's a learning opportunity and thankfully because it was on this period of transition again and of gaining myself back and taking again as you just said it like gaining control back of my of my life i was able to project my, the good faith in my own from my end and no, nothing happened out of that um I'm, I'm always going to be this person that stays on the good side of the of the road and I love doing that. And I, I think that helping people goes along with it. That's why I'll, I'm in the service industry. And, you know, I'm thankful that I already knew what I had to do. And I, and I knew that I had the good energy still in me because that allowed me to not get into a, a dark road. You know, uh, there's always people looking for people like, like us that know a lot of stuff. 
you know mm -hmm. uh there's people that want to do wrong and i think it's also important to mention to uh to the people that are listening or viewing this that even though you might be desperate at the moment just think about what's gonna happen in the next couple of months mm -hmm. because when you look back you will say holy shit, i'm here already and everything's fine and i held tight and still i got through through, through all of this right so don't 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 fall down into a spiral of uh thinking about doing something wrong or stupid because you are out of money you know yeah it's never it's never the the solution money yes although it drives our decisions or our, our lives sometimes it's not the solution it's uh money is not uh it's a vehicle right that we use uh for for other things like we live in a bartering world right i trade this amount of money for this car and yeah and whatever but i i was actually going to mention that uh you know it's something that you touched on before where when you kind of were off boarded and all your eggs were in one basket in terms of work uh you felt that you were kind of a failure because now you weren't bringing in money yeah and i was going to you know it's funny that you mentioned we live in a capitalistic kind of society yeah i was going to mention that a lot of that is, at least some of that is not entirely your fault society really emphasizes that if you have money you have power right if you have you know if you have money you can kind of like do a lot of things or do anything you have money you have flexibility right so yeah. wh whether you agree with that or not you know users you know listeners and stuff like that i think that that's really kind of some my viewpoints on society yeah, it's an, and it's an inevitable truth it's an Honestly. inevitable truth and it's kind of what people pitch to you all the time it's what you see on the outside world and stuff like that so it makes sense why you would tie your value to your bank account right like how much money you possess and how much money you make you're kind of told that all the time but to try to peel yourself away from that is really kind of enlightening and and sometimes empowering as well so i think that that's uh that's a super important uh, aspect of things i i wanted to <laughs> sorry go ahead patrick uh, sorry i was just going to to couple that up by saying that yes and once you once you notice that you don't really rely on money to be happy and to have a good things on your life you really become free man mm -hmm. honestly cannot put this into words because i'm still exploring it but the, the feeling is like you can fly even without i mean leaving the ground you know you can just close your eyes or have them open and you can you can fly inside your head you can see all the the horizon and all of its entirety and all the steps that you have to go through to get to where you're going and it's so good man because you don't depend on money you know yeah no absolutely um the last thing that i think uh mm -hmm. want to touch on uh with this is karma because i think that that was it's a very uh, important that we probably talk about this a little bit and, and maybe some listeners would not believe in karma I actually believe in karma quite a bit um, and I think that uh, good things come to those who wait and good things come when you least uh, expect it to happen like uh, in your particular circumstance Patrick you were probably down and out quite a bit and uh, you were feeling like yeah, I've applied to all these places and they haven't <laughs> responded to me and blah, 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 and whatever. And you were mentioning it the other day, like they all kind of came at once, right? Like yeah. you, you planted all these seeds and like you're watering them and you're wondering why the crops didn't grow. And then all of a sudden they kind of like all sprouted, you know, all at once. Yeah, for sure. And you, you know, I just remembered how I told you two months and a, and a half ago when I started properly looking at that for new positions uh i'd probably send well over 2000 uh, applications you know i mm -hmm. applied for every single one of the positions that i mean i didn't just apply for anything no I, it was they were positions that i could actually do which is something important for me as well although i didn't review them like deeply yes uh, i applied to pretty much every single thing that, that i saw i would be able to, to 
develop myself in uh, or dedicate my, myself into. So <laughs> I, I got little to no traction on that, on that end. But again, once the switch happened, which I, I, I love to say it right this way, you know, because I know uh, there's a date for that. And we can talk about like, that later as well. The day that it happened, it's actually probably going to be a memorable day for me for the rest of my life. When that happened, exactly the same day afterwards, like I said on the, uh, the night before uh, going to sleep, okay, today I, this, this stops, right? I, get, I gain my control back again, blah, blah, blah. I wake up. The first thing that I that I that I see when I turn on my my computer is seriously, man. <laughs> it, it was like three or four inv invitations for for interviews, and I was <laughs> like, what the what the f right? Yeah. Like, you know, I was blasted, I'm blown away, and and, and 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 you know, it felt fantastic because yeah. I knew well within my well deep within myself that this was because I decided to make this this change. Mm -hmm. And it was no coincidence, you know, and I continued being consistent. And I think that's also important consistency. Yes, it worked one day. But if I if I said, yeah, whatever, it worked, I'm, I'm just not going to do it again. It's not going to work again. You know, it's not going to do itself. You have to put something of you in order for things to work like you want them to. So I, I guess there's a price to pay for everything all the time yes you have to put a lot of uh, energy and attention into things and a lot of love uh, all these applications that i make you know i don't just half ask them uh, no i actually go and research the companies now i find uh, my strengths and the things that actually resonate well and pair well with and my background and what they are looking for and i shape my cover letters based on that mm -hmm. that's the reason why well i'm gaining a lot of traction i i, <laughs> I feel but if you, if you put it into my other perspective of energy well obviously my energy is driving me to do these things and that's why i'm getting all of these results you know mm -hmm. so yeah <laughs> it's it, um yeah, again, I, I believe in karma. And if you put good energy into the ether, it'll come back to you, um, you know, tenfold. Somehow, some way, it might not come back to you like right that minute or right that second. You know, I don't think you can expect to, uh, I don't know, help someone with groceries and then all of a sudden you buy a winning lottery <laughs> ticket or something like that. But right. um, I do think that if you release good energy into the world, uh, good things will happen. And I think more importantly than that, um, not really expecting good things to happen, but like it's just going to give you a much better feeling about yourself. Does that make sense? Right. Internally, you're just going to feel a lot more positive and better about your day. And that's really going to reflect on everything else that's going on throughout your day yeah that definitely you know i couldn't be more thankful if i, I mean I, I know i know that we are probably reaching the last points of the uh, of, of this uh, episode but <laughs> I, you know i couldn't be more thankful for everything that is going on because even for example the, the people that have rejected me mm -hmm. i know that they feel that that i have this energy and they say no he, he's probably too much for us. And, and I'm not saying this just to try to be cocky or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just that I know my worth, you know? Yes. And it's just that. Uh, there, there, As you said, it. there's a billion different companies out there. And I'm not letting myself be defined by mm -hmm. the, the perception of one company that was mm -hmm. in my past, which I'm super thankful for, by the way. I couldn't be th more thankful. I, the, I mean, my last job was probably the place where I learned the most in my professional development. So uh, I'm just looking forward to whatever comes out, out of this new uh, round of, uh, of interviews. Uh, but just to be honest with you, I, I have, well, counting uh, the, the one from yesterday and today, I had five uh, final interviews lined up. Oh, wow. So I'm trying to, you That's know what amazing. I'm trying to Congratulations. do? Congratulations. That's great. The, Thank you, man. Thank you. And, and seriously, it's been a journey. And, and what I'm trying to do is to hopefully, man, hopefully get like uh, all of all the all the offers on on the same week. You know, mm -hmm. so I can sit down, 
think it through and actually compare and, and make an informed decision. But seriously, who can tell you that they have five uh, final interviews lined up and, and moreover that they are actually going to get the, 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 the offers, right? Mm-hmm. You might be thinking, why, why are you so, so sure that you're going to get them? Well, because I've been preparing for this, you know? And I know that I'm going to, to do whatever it takes to, to shine on, on those interviews. I'm going to shine on them. I'm going to give, like you were saying again, I feel so, so, so identified with a lot of things that you say, like, I'm not going to give it 110%. I'm probably going to give it my 200%, my 2000%, you know, <laughs> obviously, because I want to show them exactly what I want to give them mm-hmm. on a cons- consistent basis. Mm-hmm. That's it, man. That's pretty much it. And I think you're overdue for a lot of success, Patrick. I think that you've been you. going through a lot of stuff and you've uh, worked really hard and tried really hard. I think you're more than capable of landing all five jobs. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, like holy I, shit, man. So, really, I, I just, I just smile and, and laugh because, you know, like two, two months ago, I was just struggling so much. And now look at this, it's, it's possible. And I know a lot of people can do it. It's just a matter of having the courage it's amazing how life changes like that so quickly too like it's just such a i don't know such a trip you know like it's just (laughs) you know you could be one minute like this you know down and out and then the next minute you could almost be like euphoric you just feel like you could do anything and you're doing it and like things are happening for you and you know, I'm super proud of you. I'm, I'm, uh, you. you know, really honored to be in your presence and see you kind of go oh, through this transformation <laughs> and uh, get to this point where you feel like you kind of understand what you want and you're in control of that. Uh, we could do an entire episode, honestly, on self worth, uh, especially when you're applying for jobs and how to evaluate offers and and for all sure. these kind of things. Yeah, that's uh, amazing topic. I think the one piece of advice that I could give you, and I'll you know, I'll probably go into it offline here, but for listeners out there, generally speaking, never take the first offer. Uh, obviously be extremely polite about it and thank them for the offer. Uh, you can make an excuse that you want, you know, in the world and just say, thank you so much for the offer. Would it be okay if I, if you gave me a couple of days to evaluate this with my family? Um, it's, it's important that you do that, right? Um, not only just for, really looking at the fine details of of everything to see what you're getting yourself into and what you're tying yourself into. But like you said, uh, to see other offers that might be on the table and, and, and see what's happening with that. Um, most companies are going to give you an offer with the expectation that you're probably going to counter with something. So yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. I'm talking about this from a salesperson standpoint. It's born <laughs> in my blood to negotiate. So take that with a grain of salt, any listeners that are not in sales. Uh, but I am telling you that most companies, it's like playing a game of poker, right? And, and you know, yeah. and, and calling your bluff, like they're going to offer you two weeks of vacation or three weeks, you're going to push for four weeks, and they know that, right? And, you know, they're <laughs> going to give you X salary, you're going to gas for Y salary, you know, they're going to give you Z comp, you're going to look for, you know, V comp, right? Uh, you're going to look for, I don't know, different benefits and stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's yeah, really important sure. to understand. Yeah, it's really important to understand your self-worth and uh, your worth in the marketplace. Uh, One thing I'm pretty sure that I mentioned this to you in the past, Patrick, I used to have a night manager that would go for job interviews around the city. And I would ask him and I would say, hey, you know, I don't want to say his name on the record, but hey, you know, uh, are you not happy here? And he says, no, I'm perfectly happy. Uh, And I was like, okay, then why are you going to interviews? And he said, well, simple, like for two reasons. Number one, for me to polish up my interview skills. Okay. Oh. Uh, and then number two, and more, more importantly, to understand my self-worth in the market. Amazing. Am I, am I worth enough for people to offer me the job? And, you know, am I getting paid the appropriate amount at my current job that I'm happy with? Wow. You know, is so, you know, is the hotel across the street willing to offer me $10,000 more or whatever. Right. And you're never, you know, you're never really going to know that until you challenge kind of like the status quo, right? 
Um, so I, I that really stuck with me, honestly, for a long time. That was really profound. I, I honestly, you know, recently I gave that advice to uh, one of my friend's wives. And I guess that really stuck with her. And she actually went out to find a new job and she she kind of quit her her old job. And uh, I'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, that that really got her to kind of like, hey, I need to get into a bigger organization that's a lot more organized with better benefits, with better pay. And, and she went and did that. She kind of was like, what is my self-worth, right? It's worth more than what my current company is offering me, so. Yeah. That that is golden golden knowledge, you know. <laughs> I feel I, I I was actually just telling Emily, our editor, yesterday, you know, that uh, I actually do this now. You know, you, you just give yourself a chance to apply for a position that is one or two steps higher. Yep. Just give yourself the chance to 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 go through through that experience. You know, find out what what it takes. To be in there with with well what they say the big shots right i consider that that well within uh your uh, experience and whatever you do at, at your job you can always go beyond you know i guess a good end note thing here is that ever since i started working and uh well as i was growing in the different positions i started as an agent right and I've already reached the position of director and always, all the time, you know, I've been so, so lucky. I consider myself lucky and I'm thankful for it. Every time I would get a raise, right? Like every single time that I switched positions, something increased in there, like or the uh, either the position or the pay, you know, or both. Mm -hmm. So uh I, I think that's a really good advice and I've, honestly <laughs> the way that he described it and the way that you put it is actually more well thought out and i'm also uh, <laughs> probably gonna adopt some of that you know so yeah thank you for sharing that no no problem i was reading a linkedin post um the other day and uh, someone was evaluating basically staying in their current job for a two-year span versus kind of like rotating jobs, right? Like going for right. another company. Um, and he said on average, based on the study, that you could increase your pay by uh, something astronomical. Like it was- Yeah, it's like 200, 300%. It, exactly. Like it was I like, it was yeah. double or triple the amount. Yeah. Just like they were taking sample sizes from all, I think it was probably mainly tech, but um, you know, all over, right? Um, and they were just saying like, Thank just by changing your job yeah. or being open-minded enough to change your job through the next two years, rather than staying with your current company for that time span yeah. would result in a, in general, a 200 to 300% increase. Holy which I mean, for, for yeah, most people, that's life changing money, right? Like that's profound. Yeah. yeah. Um, and at any level, you know, even if you are just getting started and you're on an entry level position, who would not like to have a 20%, 30% increase on their weight? Yeah. Right. So it really does open new opportunities and new um, venues for you when, when, when you get, get more money. So I think it's super valuable to always keep trying and keep going at it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm never going to stop doing it either. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Awesome. Uh, Patrick, do you have any kind of parting words before we wrap up uh, the podcast? Well, uh, honestly, well, I'm, I'm just uh, looking forward to see what comes at the podcast. I'm actually enjoying the experience so far. This is the first time that I've been uh publicly speaking uh, to, to be honest with you mm -hmm. and uh i felt great so uh i guess that uh it will come down to to what uh, the viewers say or think and uh, obviously if they want to continue hearing more stories about our, uh, <laughs> our our crazy work stories you know well uh be my guest man I, i'm always willing to to jump back again and uh going at it so uh, you know, I'm going to be sharing my LinkedIn, uh, uh, if you don't mind as well. You no, no, no. Probably put that on, on the description. If people want to reach out to me, I'm also going to be sharing GRG links and everything so, so mm -hmm. they can reach out to you. 
directly. But you know, I, I, I guess the, the the invitation in here is for for people to actually uh, contribute and to reach out to us with their questions. You know, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to see what they what they think, what they felt about this um, uh, sort of uh, dynamic. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And thank you, thank you for your time, man. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much, obviously, for your time, Patrick. Uh, you know, it was an honor and privilege to uh, sit down with you and have a one on one and a deep conversation. I know for some users, you know, it was uh, it, it, uh, it was a long one, but I think that it was a really fruitful one. We dove into definitely a lot of topics, a lot of dark topics, too. But I think that yeah. sometimes, you know, I think sometimes we need to talk about them like we pro like as human beings we probably don't address them enough just because it's kind of like taboo you know it's like let's not talk about something depressing but it's also kind of like why like there's so many people that suffer from that darkness right in, in our world so i think the more that we talk about it the better off we'll be um at the end of the day yeah yes you know i love transparency so in lieu of transparency, I'm going to invite everybody to give themselves the chance, you know? Yeah. Just give yourself the chance, uh, be open and be honest to yourself. And you will see that a lot of things will change. So it is just a matter of that. Absolutely. Um, feel free to reach out to Patrick. Uh, he'll include all of his links below. If you, if you want to look at his profile, if you want to offer him a job. Um, <laughs> reach out to you... me if you want to shown me or whatever i mean no. me down please days. don't do that uh he's just <laughs> sharing honestly his personal experiences please be respectful of your comments we ob obviously always appreciate it you know and and any kind of viewership and, and uh, people listening uh at home uh, obviously he's going to include uh, a lot of stuff on trg if you want to reach out uh we at trg always want to hear from you you know that that's why we do this at the end of the day it's it's to help people you know, one sub at a time, one podcast okay, download yeah. at a time, one click at a time, whatever you want to call it, whatever platform you're from. Um, and we're hoping that this advice kind of reaches you and, and uh, you get something out of this at the end of the day. So uh, we post podcasts every Wednesday, uh, just to let you know. And um, we'll be doing that on a routine basis. This could be any topics imaginable regarding relationships. Uh, today was, you know, regarding kind of like, your personal life and kind of darkness and obviously your job search yep. you know next week might yeah. be something else so we'd love to hear from you about your experiences with with darkness and depression and and maybe uh your job search as well uh back home yeah that's that's really about it patrick is there anything else that we need to highlight uh, i guess that would be pretty much it from my end so i just Fantastic. thank you for your time and um i'll be looking for uh the next couple of episodes uh, hopefully i can be uh, in here in the near future Have sounds you. sounds great thank you so much <laughs> listeners for for listening in and tuning in uh again we're super grateful obviously for all the support that you give us you'll never know how grateful we are <laughs> so please stay tuned obviously for next week's episode uh we're excited obviously to bring you episodes you can also follow us on youtube where we post videos uh, every Monday and Friday, we have Real Talk on Monday. Uh, we have a Q&A on mm -hmm. Friday where I answer your questions uh, if you want to write in. And obviously, Patrick will leave that information below. As always, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And, and thank you, Patrick, for his participation. My pleasure, Jeffrey. Thank you for having me. Bye for now. Great. TRG out, and uh, we'll stay tuned for next week. Take care. Bye-bye.